Good morning, my friends. Today is Monday, April 17th. It is Monday of the second week of Easter. Again, a reminder, get your taxes in if you haven't done so already. I want to start with the gospel and then we'll go back to the Acts of the Apostles. Um, so as you know, we're reading the Acts of the Apostles instead of the Old Testament to look at the early church. The gospels actually happened before the Acts of the Apostles, even though at Mass, Acts is read before the gospel. So in the gospel today, I really want to encourage you. I put a link on my blog for The Chosen. Uh, I think they do an amazing job of bringing the character of Nicodemus alive. So Nicodemus, it says, uh, so this is John chapter 3, verses 1 to 8. Nicodemus is a ruler of the Jews. He came to Jesus at night. So in The Chosen, he's shown to be fascinated by the figure of Jesus. Like He, he studied the Torah. He studied the scriptures, and there's something about this Jesus that tells him maybe he's the one. But in The Chosen, of course, they use some, um, you know, some freedom, and it shows that he and his wife don't really want to give up the lifestyle they've given to completely follow Jesus. But in this encounter that he has with Jesus in the night, he says, Rabbi, teacher, uh, I know that you've come from God because no one can do these kind of signs if they weren't from God. And Jesus says, amen, amen, meaning, listen to this, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And of course, he's like, can, can I be born again? Meaning, do I have to go back into the womb? And uh, Jesus says, I say to you, unless one is born of water, baptism, and the spirit, it's a baptism and confirmation, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. What is born of flesh is flesh, and what is born of spirit is spirit. Do not be amazed that I told you, you must be born from above. And then he goes and talks about the wind. Um, and again, they do a good job in The Chosen. He says, the wind blows where it wills. When we allow the Holy Spirit to transform our lives, we need to go where the Spirit calls us. And we see the apostles go into the ends of the world. We see St. Paul you know, going all over to spread the gospel, most of them giving their lives for Christ. That brings us to the Acts of the Apostles here, this boldness. So now we're in chapter four. Uh, Peter and John, you know, they've been arrested for preaching about Jesus. They've been warned not to talk about Jesus. They go back to the brothers and, uh, you know, they're excited that they're being persecuted for Jesus's name. I don't know about you, when the last time you were excited about being persecuted for Jesus' name, maybe never, maybe that's a difficult thing to do. Um, and it, they start to praise God saying, this has been your plan all along. Indeed, they gathered in the city, Jerusalem, against your holy servant, Jesus, whom you anointed. He said, Lord, uh, take note of their threats, enable your servants to speak your word with all boldness. The power of baptism, the Holy Spirit confirmation, the stirring up of the Spirit within us. Let the wind blow where it wills. And you stretch forth your hand to heal, and signs and wonders are done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. They know that all good things come in and through Jesus. And as they prayed, listen to this. The place where they gathered shook, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. So this is after Pentecost, the, you know, outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And as they prayed, the Spirit just shakes the building. This is possible today, and it, it's still happening. We need to have faith. We need to trust that the Holy Spirit wants to continue working amazing things in our lives. And we need to allow individually, as a community, as a church, to allow the Spirit to transform and to speak boldly. Because if we don't, you know, the enemy is, is coming at us full force. Um, what do we have to lose? Our lives? I know I'm, I'm not saying that flippantly. I mean that seriously because these, these apostles, most of them gave their lives for Christ because they knew there's life after this life. Um, do we believe that truly? So let us pray. Come Holy Spirit, come fill us with the fire of your love. Give us that boldness that John and Peter and the apostles and St. Paul uh, preached the good news. 
help us to allow the Holy Spirit to completely transform our lives and to go into this world to speak boldly and invite others into this relationship with your Son, Jesus. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please continue to like, subscribe, and share these videos with at least one person today. And I know I had somebody today say, I've been sharing. So hopefully you don't just hear these words and say, oh, there goes Father Burke again. Try to share it with one person today, maybe that you haven't before. To into your family, buen camino, and God bless you.